Welcome back to Two Keto Dudes. This is Carl Franklin from Connecticut in the United States. And in February 2016, I put myself on a ketogenic diet to take control of my metabolism. In just two and a half months, I managed to reverse all my markers of type 2 diabetes with diet alone. As of now, I'm 80 pounds lighter with no signs of diabetes or heart disease. Hi, I'm Richard Morris in Canberra, Australia. I've been on a ketogenic diet since April of 2014. And when I started, I was very sick with complications from type 2 diabetes. Within six months of starting a ketogenic diet, all of my biomarkers of disease had disappeared. I've lost just shy of 100 pounds and have completely turned my health around. In this show is a document of my progress through ketosis and Richard's experience thriving for years in ketosis. Yeah. And hopefully that might help a few people who are curious about this kind of dietary hacking. Yeah, we're not doctors. We don't want to give anyone any medical advice, but we are keen to share our own experiences. We're actually both software developers, so we're not afraid of a little technical detail, are we, Carl? Nope. <laughs> we have done some research into our own deranged metabolisms and the science behind them. We hope to share some of that research. Where possible, we intend to put links in the show notes to cite research supporting any claims that we make. And you'll probably work out pretty quickly that we're both foodies. Oh, yeah. We love to cook yep. and we love to eat. <laughs> in every episode, we both share a keto recipe that cannot be ignored. No, uh, it cannot. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start podcast number 86, Keto Cycling with Ian Robathon. Hey. So, Richard, do we have any apologies or corrections from last week's show? Uh, I'm going to apologize for not getting Gary Tabs on earlier. He was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he was awesome. And I don't think he said anything incorrectly, but if uh, if you think he did, you should, you know, how to get in touch with us. Right. We didn't get any complaints, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's revisit what a ketogenic diet is. Yeah, sure. A ketogenic diet is 20 grams or less of carbohydrates a day, enough protein to maintain your lean muscle mass, which is roughly between 1 and 1.5 grams per kilogram of lean body mass, uh, and all of your energy comes from fat. Fat. <laughs> that's fat <laughs> on your plate or fat that you've stored on your belly. Yep, that's right. So, Richard, how was your week? Uh, it was pretty good. I've just been on a 64K bike ride. And that was fasted. And that was on Sunday. We were actually recording this on Tuesday morning, Australian time. And I've been fasted ever since that bike ride. So I'm on day two, which is where it all starts to get awesome, which is great. That's where the magic um, happens. Yeah, yeah, that's where the magic happens. And I had a steak that I was telling everybody about in the last episode, mm -hmm. the aged steak. And I have the second steak in the fridge that will be aged even longer. Nice. And that's where I'm going to have to break my fast. So, And, and the really nice thing about this steak uh, was it's got a, a hardened edge to it or a hardened surface to it because it's dehydrated in the fridge. And mm. so it, it goes really crispy on the outside, but a, a little bit in from the outside, it's entirely juicy. So, you know, it's a, mm. a delicious steak. So that was my week. It was all about, uh, it's all about steak. And I'm getting ready for the low carb down under conference at the weekend where I'm going to do a talk about protein. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. <laughs> that's going to be great. Mm -hmm. I wish I was there to see it. Yeah. Yeah. So how was your week, Carl? Oh, my week's good. It's been great. I've been working on all these new podcasts. Of course, now oh, we're yeah. getting the <laughs> syndication going and. Uh, you know, I'm actually doing some IT work. I'm building databases and I'm mm -hmm. getting uh, websites up with you. You're helping me with that. And yeah, I'm doing PHP coding. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been doing some stuff in the web API on the back end. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're just, you know, we're hunkering down. We've got a lot of work to do here. Yeah, we're building out infrastructure. Yep. I went to dinner the other night with my youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. And I took her out to Bobby Flay Bar Americane. Right. And had a beautiful ribeye. Oh, And nice. my recipe mm. is actually one of the side dishes that we had. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, and ooh. the only side dish we had, I'm not going to give it away. Yeah. But I thought when I was eating it, you know, tastes like there's some carbs in this. So I looked it up. Mm-mm. Wow. It's all keto. Okay, good. So I, that's a little foreshadowing what's to come. It's yeah. It's really yummy. So is this going to be something <laughs> good I can eat with my steak? Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yeah. 
Well, this is the point in the show where we give away a piece of swag to one lucky member of the Two Keto Dudes fan club. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're giving away Keep Calm and Keto On mugs, as you know, right now. Yeah. And we pulled one lucky winner's name at random, and it is none other than, ready? Yep. Charles Gilbert. Charles, congratulations. (laughs) (laughs) You get a mug with our mugs on it. That's right. Into which you can pour your black coffee, your bulletproof coffee, your bone broth, your bourbon on ice. (laughs) I don't care what you drink out of it. Just don't drink soda. Yeah. (laughs) Right? So that's always fun. And uh, Charles won that just by being a member of the Two Keto Dudes fan club. And uh, if you don't know what that is, just go to fanclub.twoketo.com and answer a few questions and sign up. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You're now eligible to win stuff in every show. And if you're not willing to wait uh, until your name comes up in the lottery, you can always buy that stuff at gear.twoketo.com. Yep. That's (laughs) G-E-A-R dot twoketo.com. All right. And that brings us to one of my favorite segments of Two Keto Dudes. It's none other than... (laughs) You totally (laughs) wookied. I did. I'm going to go first. All right. So somebody sent me this. It's a YouTube article. And this is a guy, his name is Brosnose or Brosnose. 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 And he's lifting 800 pounds... It's a basically 363 kilogram squat. And, uh, nice. you just got, you've got to see this video because it's a you mess. You see the look on his oh, face. You just see the look on his face. I mean, he's a, he's a big dude. And, yeah. and the, the weights are just a, a motley collection of weights. It looks like they've strapped on a, a couple of, uh, 44 gallon drums onto this, <laughs> onto the bar. Yeah. And the bar is seriously stressing. Bar is seriously stressing. And this dude, he just does, he really does one squat. And everybody, the people who are filming him and the people who are watching on it are just saying, dude, racket, dude, racket. <laughs> and yeah. I tell you, he, get, he gets down and he almost doesn't get back up again. It's like he, he's, no. la- he's like he's left half of his colon on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, you know, but 800 pounds, that's a lot of weight, you that, know? That, this guy's that is working a heck of a lot of weight. Yeah. So that's my mouth for the day. So what do you got, Carl? Well, it's funny that you should have mentioned that. It's almost like we planned it or something. Because <laughs> I went to the ketogenic forums and I saw three days ago our own Brenda Zorn posted that it's my 54th birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, Brenda. Yeah, happy birthday, Brenda. I did a progression at the gym this morning, then beat my personal best and lifted 800 pounds <sighs> on the free weight leg oh, press. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that- she leg pressed 800 pounds. Ten times. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> that guy yeah. that guy nearly tore his freckle out <laughs> and he just lifted it <laughs> once. <laughs> yeah. But then again, you know, lifting is different than leg presses, but yeah, sure. she did ten eight hundred pound leg press. Full lifts. Very impressive. For for a fifty four year old grandmother, that is yeah. just that Brenda, we are in awe. We are in awe, Brenda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she finishes with keto has made my body amazingly strong. I still have not reached a limit. <sighs> wow. 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 That's all I got to say. Is wow. <laughs> yeah. I got. We just have to pause to let the awesomeness of that yeah. sink in. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Oh, I got man. nothing. I'm very no, impressed. I got nothing after that. I've got to admit. Uh, the other day, I did actually see how much I could lift, and I put all of the weights that were available onto the sled, and I could only get about 440 uh, pounds of weight on the sled without stealing weights from <laughs> from other people's machines. And it was a hotel gym, so I didn't want to make any enemies. So right. I was able to comfortably uh, press and do calf extensions with 440. I'm not sure I could go hmm. over 700. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't think I could get close to what Brenda's uh, uh, pushing with her legs. So yeah. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. All right, Brenda, keep calm and keto on and keep in touch. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a great show because we have a, just a regular dude on the show, somebody that uh, reached out to us by email, uh, Ian Robathon. He works in IT in the UK, and he considers himself a serious amateur cyclist. But here's the thing, kids. He's been ketogenic since July 2016. 
and he's here to tell his story of keto and cycling and all that other good stuff. Welcome to Two Keto Dudes, Ian. Hello, guys. How are you? Yeah, good day, Ian. <laughs> So thanks for the introduction and thanks for the invite on. Uh, very pleased to do this. Mm. Sure. Great to have you here. Um, Richard reached out to you after you sent us an email and uh, it, it just one thing led to another and we thought it would be good to talk to you. Why don't you give us a little more background to your story? Okay. I mean, I, exercise and cycling goes back a long way for me, um, mm. but I was doing the, um, the standard calories in calories out i was trying to lose weight i went down from 129 kilograms to 90 kilograms putting low calories the usual standard textbook stuff but i couldn't get below 90 kilograms um i did rides i did something called the marmot uh when i was still car burner um right and the marmot for any keen cyclists out there is the toughest one day sport if in europe uh, some say yeah. the world, but let's not worry about that. <laughs> and um, I did that in just about 11 hours, finished decent time, uh, finished. That was a key thing. So, yeah. but when I was there, I met somebody called Fidel, who, who was a strict ketoer. I shared a room mm-hmm. with him on, on this and we was talking and I mentioned I couldn't shift my weight. I wanted to increase my performance. Yeah. And he, he talked about the virtues of, of the keto way of life. Um, he gave me a recommendation to read Steve Finney's and uh, Jeff Vollock's book. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. That's gold, that is. Uh, mm. I read it on holiday because I went on holiday straight away. <laughs> well, there's two of them. There's low, the art and science of low-carbohydrate living, and then there's the one about exercising, right? Low, low-carbohydrate performance. Yeah. yeah. So it was that one I read. And yeah. right. basically, I came back off holiday and was keto from that day forwards. Mm. Nice. And so tell me about your transition. How, how hard or easy was it for you? I think it was standard. When you read the stories of everybody, um, took about six weeks to get past the, uh, the dreaded keto flu. I was still riding during that time, but it was tough. Mm. I lost power. I've got power meters, heart rate meters. I've got the full, um, technical, uh, support you could hope for as an amateur. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and then, um, at that point, um, I did a ride, which I'd done the previous year. Uh, and during this ride, all I had was a few jelly babies. Wait a minute. What's a jelly baby? Like a jelly gummy. Bean? It's a gummy. A gummy. <laughs> Gum, oh, gummy bears. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Now, gummy bears just for carbs? Yeah, just, just in case I bonked. Um, all right. And bonking mm. for the uninitiated is running out of carb stores. Yeah. Uh, mm. I never did. I was half an hour quicker than I was the previous year. I hadn't really nice. lost any weight by this time, maybe a few pounds, but nothing to uh, – Right. Nothing to say right on back. And I was still in keto adaption, but at the end, mm. I'm using fasted rides and different methods. I think that was the kick because mm. after that, I just felt great from then on. It was like I could do four hour fasted rides, five hour yeah. fasted rides. Oh, yeah. And to the point where I went to this weekend and did 160 kilometers, 100 miles, mm. uh, basically with just three, uh, scrambled eggs and bitter butter and, <laughs> and went for it. And I did it in under six hours uh, wow. and I finished. Nice. On a particular ride, I finished 20th of, I think, 100 people. Wow. So, um, question during your transition. Yeah. I, I mean, that book talks about the importance of salt. Did you take that seriously enough? No. Uh, because no. Um, I think if you guys remember, I put this on the Facebook site. Um, I had problems with my heart rate. It was ballooning too high. I was yeah. doing stuff. Mm. I was 140, 150 beats when I should have been 120, 130 mm. in comparison. Right. So I reached out to, of all people, Steve Finney and Jeff Follock. Steve Finney got mm. back and said, I'm not eating enough salt here. Yeah. Uh, he there guaranteed it. <laughs> so I went out and ordered myself pink salt. Um, yeah. I did the thing. I ordered five kilograms of it instead of 500 grams <laughs> as a test. So if anybody wants any salt in the yeah. UK, I've got plenty in my cupboard. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I still not got through the first bag. Um, and uh, uh-huh. started putting that on all my foods. And within about a month, I, I went back to my normal levels. So salt is vital. I mean, for people out there, I think, again, it's like the fat fear. Uh, the salt mm. fear is something that we've got to get over. Absolutely. That somehow yeah. it causes heart attacks and blood pressure. And, and, and the story on blood pressure is my blood pressure, and I started to measure my blood pressure from then, went from 150 over 90, and my last one was 110 over 70. Beautiful. So Great. all that extra yeah. salt I'm eating, way above the recommendations, has caused a drop in blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it just shows you the myths. It shows you the myths that's yeah. out there. 
Certainly. Certainly. Okay. So you got through adaptation and then you've been, you found you were finishing before you know you're beating your personal bests, right? Yeah. Whenever I tried to beat a personal best, usually distance rides are not. There is one thing yeah. to note is there is definitely a loss of power uh, when you adapt, but you gain what you gain on the endurance. Now I can't speak yeah. for the guys that do weightlifting and powerlifting and stuff. I'll, I'll leave that story up to them, but for guys and girls who do endurance sports, they worry too much about the loss of power because what you gain in the endurance side, the aerobic fitness is more than compensated for your lack of power on a sprint at the end because you'll be in front of the people you weren't beating before because of the, yeah. because of what, um, keto gives you and fat adaption. And this is where we got to get terms fat adaption rather than keto adaption with these terms yeah. get all intermingled. It's true. Right. And fat adaption takes a long time to work out your system compared to keto. Mm. I never heard about this lack of power problem, but then again, yeah, I don't, I'm not very active. So if you read the exercise and go through the exercise forms, everybody in the endurance sphere seems to lack, have this lack of confidence over the power. Um, I've just been chatting with somebody on there on a swimming thread and it's like do I need to have something during swimming I'm doing a 10, 6k swimming and I think it's lack of confidence because you get told carbs are for power and stuff but I've proved well, you know, I think about people like Brenda Zorn who just bench pressed with her oh, legs yeah. 800 no, pounds she's leg pressed. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's why, yeah leg pressed I mean that's not a lack of power to me what's that in kilos that's about 200 kilos is it almost 400 yeah four, almost 400 oh, yeah. I mean that is that's stunning. And, um, and I think people have got to get this over fear that, yeah, ca- you need a bit of carbs. So if you're going to be an 100 meter runner, if you're going to be something in that sphere, then probably you, you will lose a tiny bit of top end. But for the majority of us, we don't want that. We want muscle building if you're going to be a power lifter. And that's been proven by so many people now. And then mm, you get into right. the protein debate, which I think we'll leave this uh, episode yeah. because we've covered that over yeah. the, uh, over the years, you guys have, but sure you get into pr- protein debate. I'm not worried about protein myself because, um, I'm doing enough cycling not to worry about the store of protein because it's always going to be used up. And I think that's key. Yeah. And mm-hmm. everybody's individualistic. The one thing we have to remember is that everybody has a different metabolism. Everybody has a different body. Well, and, and really the, the, the key is everybody is uh, insulin sensitive or insulin resistant to a different degree. Yeah. That really uh, sets the tone for what you should be eating and how much. But I, I get back to the salt thing. I think of when I think of times when I bonk on keto, it's because I don't have enough salt. And, you know, I, and then I look at people like Brenda Zorn, who's like pressing 800 mm. pounds and say, well, you know, there's clearly not a power problem there. You know, maybe a uh, lack of salt is um, a good uh, candidate for, for reducing power. Carl, it's interesting you mentioned the word bonk is do you believe you're bonking or do you believe what happened to me in a couple of rides ago is that I cramped too much and the cramp was definitely due to lack of hydration yeah I mean I just mean bonk in a general way I mean a, a bonk on uh, on uh, as a car burner is totally different we all know what that feels like yeah but uh, yeah. you know when I mean bonk I just mean you know run out of steam or get tired okay. or yeah cramp I mean sure then I think it's an hydration thing more than a salt thing. Um, I think part of the thing about power is that uh, glucose provides that sprint at the end of a race. Yeah. And a lot of uh, sports physiologists say that, you know, this is a critical component. If you can stay at the peak of your performance for the entire race while everybody else is tiring, they're not going to be within <laughs> gooey of you towards the end of the race to be able to out sprint you. Correct. For endurance, it's, I mean, I went out on Sunday and rode four hours just for fun, you know, mm. whereas in the past, <laughs> it, I'd, I'd be flat out doing 30 minutes, 30 Indeed. minutes or an hour. And I'd be, I'd be saying that now that's it for me for the day. Yeah. I'll give you a perfect example was a ride I did at the weekend. So it was 100 mm. miles, 160 kilometers, did it in five hours, 51. My finishing time was five hours, 55. So I stopped for four minutes. Two of those minutes <laughs> was to fill up water. Two of them were for a toilet break. Right. Pay. Yep. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. I finished way in front of others who were better than me because I can see them on Strava. I know what they're like. And when you mm-hmm. compare them, I'm, they're miles better than me, but they're stopping for an hour. 
they're stopping for 30 mm. minutes. So I'm gaining 25 yeah. minutes on somebody who's better. So if you're competitive, Incredible. amateur, then why would you worry about the five minutes end sprint when you're trying to lay down 600 watts of power? You, you yeah. would have gained your 20 minutes way, as, as Carl said, you would have just gained it way before, um, mm. before you even have to worry. Um, and I'll take my example, which is the Marmot. It's a cut two hours off between being a carb burner and a keto person. Wow. A fat burner. Two hours. Mm-hmm. One hour was uh, the stops. And yeah. one hour was being lighter, more uh, more aerobic. And you said it before, but how many kilometers and about how long is this race? So the one I just did was 100 miles, and in, which is 160 kilometers. Yeah. Wow. And and how how long is the Marmot? Uh, 175 kilometers. So it's about 105 miles, and it's 5,000 meters of climbing, which is 15,000 right. feet. Jeez. And it that's goes the critical off. thing. You, you, you're climbing up a kilometer in the air. <laughs> exactly. And oh, Five kilometers, five and kilometers, for, yeah. And for people who are um, cycling fans out there, it goes up the Glandon, the Glibier, the Telegraph, uh, and the Alpe d'Huez. And um, if, so you're cycling, <laughs> if you're cycling, well, set yourself a target, Richard. I mean, don't be yeah. a, don't be afraid of it because um, no. if you'd said to me four years ago, I'd do it fine, and I managed it as a car burner. Mm. But um, if you look at the pictures between when I did it then and when I did it a year later, I'm leaner, yeah. slimmer. Are you are. Uh, yeah, no. I, I don't look out of breath. I don't look like I'm about to collapse as I... <laughs> If I showed you one picture of when I finished <laughs> compared to when I finished this year, it's just a total different transformation. And yeah, yeah. I know it's difficult to compare to pros, but I'm pretty convinced most top cyclists are keto in their off season. Mm. Yeah, a lot of them train keto. Yeah, and they're all fat adapted, and then they but they they'll, they'll have like uh, like uh, Chris Froome will have like uh, t- two hundred grams of, yeah. of ca- carbohydrates, and uh, as Tim Noakes says, you know. A guy, because he's going to go out and race for 180 kilometers. Yeah. So, you know, that's not going to be an impact to him. No. Uh, he's just get, getting as much fuel of, all, of as many kinds as he can in to be able to outlast his competitors. That's right. And he does need that because if he's time trialing, if he's yeah. got a sprint at the end when seconds do count at pro level, then mm. he does need yeah. that extra boost. But if you notice, um, a lot of pros now, they take their musettes, the bags of food, and a lot yeah. of the food, they don't, if you look nowadays compared to, say, five years ago, f- far fewer are eating gels. Mm. Yeah. Just have a look at it. And, yeah. you know, I sit there all day watching a stage. So you just watch it. And yes, they have their feed stations, but they, they've got their sponsors. So they've got to please the sponsors. But, if you sure. look at it, they're eating real food. They're having sandwiches. Yeah. They're having bits Bananas of cake. Yeah, yeah, very few of them. When you hear stomach upsets on the Tour de France or any of the other major ones, you can bet that these yeah. people are eating a lot of gels. Yeah, right. The goose. Yeah, and Chris Froome is the perfect example of how he's improved his performance. Forget the other stuff that might yeah. be around Chris, but he's definitely a fat-adapted athlete. The other one is Roman Bardet, who finished second this year in the Tour de France. And he, he's trained mm-hmm. by um, Peter Defty and he's mm-hmm. tied in with uh, Vola Confini with the Faster yeah. Study. So it it works. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. living proof. Yeah. I'm, I'm on, you know, anybody can look at my Strava, Strava stats, so they're up there. Well, why don't you share a few of them with us? I mean, you started this July 2016, so it's been a year yeah. and, what, three months, four months? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah tell, us, tell us where you started and where you are today. Well, the simple one is, as I said, I did the Marmot and I was two hours quicker a year later. That's the ultimate proof. Yeah. Give us some vitals, though. Tell us your weight, your blood pressure, oh, right. your ketones, okay. your glu- glucose, all that. You know what? I don't actually measure them anymore. Um, ah. <laughs> the last weight I got was 82 <laughs> kilos on. back in <laughs> July. Um, my last ketone, I use ketonics, so it's mm-hmm. difficult really to compare, but I'm pretty well in the... Uh, over 40 zone on ketonics for people who know about that uh, device. I haven't measured my yeah. ketones for ages. Uh, last yeah. time was 0.3. But then if you listen to Peter Defty, he's saying that people who are highly fat adapted don't produce a lot of ketones because they get burnt up straight away. That's right. And I think yeah. you guys have talked about that in a, a couple of we podcasts have. ago. Yeah, you're measuring the waste product, not what's being used. Exactly. Utilized. Exactly. Mm, yeah. um, blood pressure, as I said, last measurement, 110 over 70, which is basically spot on. Beautiful. 
Um, I haven't measured my glucose for ages, but I don't think I've had, I think I was a tiny bit insulin resistant. You could see it when I did some tests with some coke. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. but now I'm, I haven't tested for ages, but I don't feel I need to. And I think this is key for people is, and for people listening who are new is you do notice when you're in it. It's people talk about the mental quality. They talk about the, oh, yeah. I don't sleep much. That's, you know, I used to <laughs> have trouble. I do, mm. I've got to wake up at 10 to 4 and 10 to 5 in the morning to mm-hmm. cycle into work. And my commute, I'm pretty well yeah. there straight away doing it. And people at work don't get it. But then they're sitting there. I'm having my, from the kitchen canteen, I'm having my bacon, my eggs, my, some mushrooms, black pudding. Shiv, do you guys call your black pudding <laughs> over in Austin, America? Well, we uh, glad. <laughs> yeah. Glad sausage. <laughs> okay. We don't have anything of the kind in America, but I've been to the UK plenty of times. I know all about uh, black pudding. So you know about yeah. black pudding. <laughs> There's a bit of carb in there, but literally a, a tiny bit. Um, and now I'm sitting next to somebody thinking he's healthy with his porridge, his bowl of yogurt, his fruit, and um, yeah, yeah. a couple of pieces <laughs> of toast. You know, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he might be perfectly fine, but he probably doesn't realize I've cycled into work and I won't have anything. Then my sort of intermittent fasting at work is I don't eat anything during the day after my breakfast. So I'll have my breakfast and then I'll have my uh, dinner back. Well, just before I've come onto this call. So about six o'clock at night. Yeah. So Ian, tell me about your instrumentation on your bike and your bike itself. Well, I've got three different bikes. So I've got my top bike, which I use for the main events. Um, yeah, it's basically a pro racer bike, but with uh, not quite the frills to a pro racer bike. Then I've got uh, mm-hmm. my medium bike, which I use for a lot of my training, and then I've got my commuter bike, which I use just to go up and down down the road to work and stuff. And it's just just got hard wearing um, gear. So my top bike's got electronic gears and stuff like that. Um, nice. I use an art rate monitor. Um, for people into their tech, the site you must go to is DC Rainmaker site, old Rainmaker. Yes, definitely. Um, I don't know if we're into publicizing websites here, but that is the number oh, one. If you've got that. any yeah. tech <laughs> queries, uh, go to his site. Uh, so I've got this uh, art rate monitor, which you put on the upper arm, which I've had for about two years after his advice. Oh, on your arm. So, I mean, yeah. I have a, I have the strap, which I, I ride with, and I've, I've got a Garmin Phoenix 5 watch, which will do my heart rate, but um, the strap will do heart rate variability, and, and it's, a, it's a lot more reliable. But is the upper arm one as good as the chest strap? Well, you, I use the chest straps, and I found I sweat a lot, and uh, I'm airy as well, and I tend to – that's a bad combination for chest straps. So right. I went to a wrist one from Mio and that mm-hmm. was a a bit awkward a bit big and then I went to race site and it was like um I forgot the name of it now I should remember <laughs> it was an upper arm one which <laughs> you put and the closer it is to right. your heart then the more accurate it is than the wrist and the wrist ones for cycling don't tend to be accurate because they bump and it loses the connectivity yeah, between your wrist true. and your your sensors so if you're cycling or running even the best ones are your art or, or this upper arm one which is the one he uses as his default heart rate management measurement um got nice. parameters on oh, I bought them a few years ago from Garmin Vector for pedals because you can just swap them out um, so you actually replace your pedal with a one with a little meter and a strain gauge in it. That's right, yeah. And that 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 tells how much power is being put into the pedals yeah. by your feet. Yeah. And do you, do you have a do you have a cadence sensor on your pedal arm? Yeah, it's built within it. Oh, very nice. Uh, you you get that as only one. So and then you just have your onboard computer, uh, whichever right. make and model. Um, I've switched to Wahoo now rather than Garmin because mm-hmm. I had a yeah. few problems with mine and somebody told me to use the Wahoo Element and it's fantastic um, yeah. so I, far. I use my phone, to be honest. I've got a phone that does a reasonable job, uh, run cycle meter. The only problem I've noticed is when I've been out for maybe three or four hours, uh, cycle meter starts to get laggy, like it gets the message mm. uh, slower the longer you are out. And huh. so uh, the, the the message between my cadence sensor, which now cadence is just how fast you cycle, you, you turn your, your your feet over, so how fast your pedals go around, um, and and as a as a cyclist, you're trying to keep the same cadence. You're trying to keep your pedals going around sixty times a, a minute or seventy five times a minute, and then you just change your gears to to, to determine how much power you're going to put into the, into your climb. But the um, uh, I noticed that my cadence uh, values 
slow as the longer I'm out <laughs> on the road. So, well, yes. you know, it's just something to do with my hardware. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I, I've only just started training with, uh, with a cadence meter on. It's like having a little nag in my ear that tells me, you know, you're, you're 59, uh, your cadence is 59, you need to increase your cadence every sort of. Well, the, the old point about cadence is, as you know, I'm up to the, I know I eight is uh low nineties, which is nice. where I want to be. Yeah, um the idea yeah. is is there's two types of cyclists. There's ones who crunch your pedals and put a lot of power through mm-hmm. and that's very muscle yeah. fatiguing. And then yeah. the, the quicker you spin on a lower gear, people think it's slower, but it isn't because you've got your aerobic system. And right. the key I think for keto adaption actually is, is aerobic system. Um people right. worry about HIIT stuff it uh, it's uh, it's sessions and stuff which are useful but i now do 80 percent of my training at 135 beats or lower mm. right yeah so that's yeah. that's phil maffetone method right that's right yeah and that ties mm. in with the old um what brad kearns talks about and stuff in terms of uh, mark sissons as well in terms okay. of if you improve your aerobic system, your top end power doesn't matter that much because you can go up and down that scale at least. You can get into your top power for climbing right. an hill and then you'll come back yeah. down quick. And then that your aerobic system is absolutely key, it's key to all sports or endurance sports yeah. anyway, obviously. If you're an 100 meter athlete, aerobic power is irrelevant. But if you're a 10,000 meter <laughs> runner, a marathon runner, a long distance cyclist, a long distance swimmer, your aerobic system the way you are pumps the blood and gets transformed into the oxygen that your blood needs is absolutely key. And people are scared. Mm, yeah. You see, you see skeptics uh, replying back to Tim Noakes a lot on Twitter where yeah. they're going, well, how can fat burning use up a lot more energy? And yeah, yeah. yeah this thing about burning fat in the flame of carbs, is it? Um, right. yeah. About doing that. But actually, it doesn't matter. People read mm. too much and they <laughs> take all this info that comes in from all the sides. And really, yeah. if you believe in keto, just stick to what you know. Don't worry about the noises off. Otherwise, just you're just- keto on, right? Exactly. Exactly. I got to ask you <laughs> about what you ate and what you eat now. Like, <laughs> as you were fat adapting, what were the kinds mm. of things you were eating and what is that, what does your diet typically look like now? Okay. So. My diet now is no different from my diet when I adapted. I've okay. kept to the same diet. And to be honest, I've, it's fairly plain. So my diet is all around meat, veg, eggs, fish, and just combinations of those. I don't go in for fancy meal recipes and stuff. Yeah. So my typical one is like today. So what I've had today is I've had my eggs and bacon for breakfast, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. nothing for lunch. I have one treat, which is a pack of crisps or chips, as I'm having in the US. That, that's my mm-hmm. one thing. Okay. I, I just I can't get rid of. I've stopped smoking. I've done a lot of things. I just can't <laughs> get rid of those. Welcome to True um, Confessions. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still under the 50 yeah, grams of carbs a day, so that, that's the key. Yeah. And then I've come out and yeah. I've had basically a beef burger without the BAP. So yeah, three of those yeah, burgers, actually. Yeah. yeah. The BAP, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what, about, what do you do for fat besides bacon? Do you add fat to your diet? Well, I cook in animal fat, um, mm-hmm. what we call mm-hmm. over here, um, dripping. Dripping um, treacle, um, yeah. tallow. Yeah. 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 And then I, I will usually have cream. Uh, you mentioned clotty cream making that. So clotty cream with um, double cream on top. Oh, yeah. Mm, um, nice. <laughs> and occasionally just a tiny bit of uh, top ice cream, not the cheap, nasty stuff, but uh, mm-hmm. top ice cream just to just to put a chill on, just to finish it mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably I'm eating more calories than I did when I was trying as a carb burner and keeping my yeah. weight down. And my exercise levels are slightly up, and yet I lost 13 kilos, and now I've just stabilised at this weight. I don't really want to go right. down anymore. Um, yeah, and I'm out quite happy. I do the bits of fasting when I need to, especially IF uh, a lot. Yeah. I do fasted rides. I mean, this is the thing: is you talk and you're saying you do a four hour fasted ride. How, how is that possible? Well, it is. I know it's crazy. You just yeah. do it. <laughs> just do it. It is. Fasting feels so good. I become addicted to how how good it makes me feel, even if I'm not exercising. But when I am exercising, it's even better. Oh, yeah, I'm not into. I'm not interested in doing days of fasting, but certainly. Um, I'll eat my breakfast late, so I'll eat at six, six in the evening and I won't eat again probably until 10 in the morning. So, yeah. 
you also go for a ride in the morning when you ride to work. You, yeah. You're fasted. You have have breakfast at work, right? That's right. So straight up, straight out yeah. on the bike, mm-hmm. uh, about an hour's ride in. Uh, then about another hour and a half, two hours before I have anything to it. And usually I'm not hungry. That's a- <laughs> that's the thing, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a str- strange thing. It is a strange thing. And it, the best thing about fat adapting is you get to this point where you're just not thinking about food so much and, you know, you you get lazy about it and just, uh, you know, man, I just don't need to eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It becomes like a an, an extra chore. Yeah, and I noticed that when I went on holiday. So, um, confession number two is I went on holiday and I kind of had some naughty stuff, <laughs> as we uh, would call it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some a naughty lot of, bits. A lot of beer <laughs> at night. And as you're sitting there and 30 degree temperatures and yeah. you're sitting there. And one thing you notice is how hungry you are next morning. Within a couple yeah. of days, it was like I'm back to waking up and desperately wanting something to eat. Yep. Wow. So I forced myself to go out for a walk just to get the system, no, not get back into the habit. But the strange thing was, as soon as I got back home, I didn't have any adaption problems. I went straight back right. in it. Nice. Yeah, that that's what I find too. I mean, the best thing to do is get right back on the horse the next day. If, that's right. If you keep feeding the monster, the monster's going to grow. Yeah, and it will, and you just go back into your old ways. But I think people realize yeah. that when they've been on it. Uh, your car, you're moving up to about two years, is it, in February? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Richard's about four years. I'm yeah. one and a yep. bit years. Yeah. I think once you can get over the first six months, I think then it just all falls into place. It just all falls into place. Yeah. yeah. But what you have now is, especially through the medium of Twitter, is just all a lot of negativity. Now, I can understand uh-huh. that. I, I sort of get Confusion it. Confusion too, right? I mean, that, like you said, there's so much information out there. People are looking for the magic bullet and, you know, mm. The magic bullet really is just be patient and let it happen. Mm. There's a lot yeah. of people after Tim Noakes at the moment. Really? If you notice oh, online, yeah. if you look at his mentions, he's dealing with it. He's probably not responding to a lot of them. Um, they're not rude. These are people who are scientists themselves mm-hmm. um, and advocates. They're not your general public. And they keep quoting studies at him and stuff. And yeah, they're probably all bakers, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. You mentioned my comment a couple of weeks ago when we spoke, um, when you guys spoke to, I forgot his name, about the uh, the studies and the quality of studies that appear. And oh, right, you sure. picked up right. on a post I made. Um, and it's that kind of thing is that there's a study out recently, if people just look what I've, I've posted. Um, and it's just the quality of them. They're not, they're not, uh, assessing things apples against apples or pears against right. pears. They're assessing right. people having external extraneous um ketones against people who've been Exogenous, eating carbs. Yeah. yeah, and right. They're not comparing the same. Right. It's a ridiculous comparison. Yeah, they yeah. talk about uh, we compared a low carb diet to a low fat diet. Oh well define a low <laughs> carb diet, right? I mean you yeah. did you do yeah. it right? <laughs> and the no, answer is I'm, usually no. No, yeah. and what's a low carb to him? He's twenty, thirty percent still of yeah, your, right. Right. of your hundred grams of carbs yeah. a day. Yeah, and yeah. That, that was that study today, which was like um, feeding people two hundred grams of carbs yeah. with right. as Richard put a diet coke. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. As, a, as a test, you know, like the diet coke reverses all those other carbs, just takes them right out of here. <laughs> Your system, I wished. I wished. So that was actually Louise Burke, who uh, she's been after Tim Noakes um, mm. uh, at conferences and stuff. She's a, a famous sports scientist here in uh, Canberra, and she did two studies on walkers. And she, what she managed to do, she basically they they went low carb for three weeks while they were training, and then did this big race at the end. And she said, "See, you know, the the people who went low carb lost their performance." But what she what she did was she captured keto flu. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, and and then you look at the proper study, like the faster study, which if anybody's interested in uh, their performance, go and get because what it yes. shows you is that you're. Your old, what they used to call zone two fat burning zone, yeah? 
aerobic yeah, zone yeah, right. is much higher now. It's if you're fully fat adapted, you're burning fat into your zone four um, heart right. rate and power. What that basically means is you're not using your carb stores unless you really need them for them big efforts, which basically means you've got your right. carb stores left. Right. Nice. You're using your fat, and um, there was a guy on the forum yesterday who said, "Oh, I'm not fat enough. You know, my body fat's <laughs> too low." Yeah. <laughs> You can yeah. be 4% body fat and you, you've still got 10,000 calories to burn. Mm, mm. Yeah. Well, Ian, yeah. what's next for you? What are you going to do next? It's my off-season now, so I've finished all my um, my aims, all ticked off yeah. and um, uh, well done. completed. <laughs> all right, then. Yeah. Have some fine champagne. Yeah, it's just a bit of riding now. All, all, math, yeah. all math stuff, nothing pressured, nothing... Uh, um, just go for rides, enjoy. And then yeah, I've got, yeah. I'm going to Tenerife to do Mount Eddy. Um, All right. People will know that um, for a bit of mm. winter training for a few days. And then in January. And then I'm going to do, um, one thing I mentioned was I did a 305 kilometer ride in Wales called the Dragon Devil. Jesus. Uh, 305 kilometers is 210 miles. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of hill climbing. If anybody knows Wales, uh, the Breckens yeah. and stuff, you'll know mm. all about that. And yep. um, I did that in 12 hours with only half an hour stops. Uh, wow. My target now is to delay in 11 hours and basically number of stops probably will be about the same because it's just water stops nice. for that. You're on your bike for 12 hours, so you <laughs> yeah, stopping for yeah. 30 minutes over 12 hours. Yeah, you'll feel that after 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are amazing, sir. Ian Robathon, thanks very much for joining us on the Two Keto Dudes podcast. Thanks very much. All right. Could you say you're due for a little... Well, that was wonderful. I really enjoyed speaking to another cyclist who's also keto. And, uh, you know, th- I, I found it inspiring to realize how much he's improved his performances. And certainly the, the kinds of uh, rides that he's riding are very impressive. Yeah. It makes me sad that I didn't get to ride my tricycle, my, my uh, you know, three wheel uh, recumbent at all this summer. Oh, I just no. didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have a chance. Yeah. I'll get on that bandwagon. Trust me. It's coming. (laughs) All right, then. Are you hungry? Yeah, I am a little bit hungry. All right, then. Let's make up some recipes. Recipes! (laughs) Uh, Never get tired of it. (laughs) All right. I I guess I'll go first because everybody's dying to know what what the heck I ate at Bobby Flay Bar Americaine. Mm -hmm. It was cauliflower goat cheese gratin. Ooh. That sounds interesting. So how do you make that? All right. So it came out in this little tray, mm-hmm. and uh, I found it on foodnetwork.com, and it is – you don't have to adjust it at all. It is keto. Nice. So it's one head of cauliflower cut into florets, mm-hmm. two cups of heavy cream, a half a pound of Monterey Jack cheese, coarsely grated, mm-hmm. two cups of grated Parmesan, and six ounces of goat cheese cut into small pieces. Right. Also, salt and freshly ground pepper. Mm-hmm. You pretty much layer all this stuff, the cauliflower, heavy cream, the cheeses, in the medium casserole dish and season it with salt and pepper. And then you roast it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 30 minutes or until the cauliflower is soft and the sauce is thickened slightly. Remove and let it rest for 10 minutes and serve it. That's it. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do with my steak. I've got half a head of cauliflower. I shall adjust the recipe, and that is what I'm going to have with my steak. Now, there's one thing I'm going to add to it when mm. I make this tomorrow night, which I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to add a little white wine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. A little dry white wine, like a Chardonnay or something. Yeah. Maybe Not much. Just maybe a quarter of a cup. Yeah. Now, what what might be nice actually is a little bit of thyme as well. Sprinkle a little bit of thyme over it. Yeah. And the wine and the thyme and the cauliflower. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What you got? So my recipe today is actually dessert. Mm. When I was in uh, America for Keto Fest, uh, we went to visit Carl's mum, and she has a really large stand of blueberry plants. Yeah, and we basically spent uh, an hour picking blueberries. I think we got like a quart of blueberries. Um, yeah, it was fairly fairly big bucket full. And it occurred to me that wouldn't it be nice if you could eat blueberries all year round? Mm-hmm. And so it. 
turns out actually in Australia right now, berries are very, very cheap at the supermarket. Mm-hmm. And so I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy punnets of berries when they're really, really cheap or I'm going to harvest them if you've got blueberry plants like Carl's mother has or mm-hmm. uh, we have blackberry bushes all over Canberra in February that's a uh, blackberry uh, season. So yeah, what I did was I put a tray in the freezer, put a – sheet of baking paper over the tray and I separated out the berries uh, so there's right. space between them all so they could all freeze independently. That's the key. Yeah, that's the key. And then once they're all frozen, you put them in a bag, in a, in a Ziploc bag, and you can keep them in the freezer uh, for, for months. Now, yeah. strawberries are a little bit too large to do this because when you freeze a strawberry, you end up with a giant ice cube strawberry flavored ice yeah. cube and it's really a pain right. to defrost because you're gonna have to defrost these before you use them so right. what i do with the strawberries is that i use a mandolin and i set it on a thick setting oh. and i do maybe a, a half centimeter i guess about an eighth of an inch thick slices of strawberry so i just pull the holes <laughs> off slice a, a whole punnet full of strawberries with the mandolin and then I lay them out so that on this uh, sheet of baking paper so they're not touching each other and they freeze solid and then a little bit like banana chips but you just mm. toss those in a bag so now I've got in my freezer a bag of strawberries a bag of blueberries a bag of raspberries and mm. now it, to make a dessert out of this I get a ramekin a, little, a small little dish Mm-hmm. And I put in the ramekin four blueberries. Uh, I mean, you can have different um, sure, ratios yeah, yeah. yourself, but this is how much I use to make a dessert. Four blueberries, two raspberries. And the cool thing about frozen raspberries is, is you can squeeze them and they shatter into like little uh, gems of uh, of raspberry flavor. Oh, yeah, so yeah. It's really cool. So uh, four blueberries, two raspberries, and probably about a whole strawberry worth of the slices of strawberry. Yeah, not too much. Not too much. Chuck it in the microwave for about 40 seconds. And mm-hmm. I two bowls, one for me, one for Julie, chuck it in the microwave for 40 seconds. When they come out, I put a scoop of coconut yogurt or you can do mascarpone or whipped cream, uh, whipped yeah. cream you know, uh, on top of it, and that makes a, a wonderful dessert. Great. Easy. So that's my recipe. Yeah, easy one. And also a good one for buying food when it's cheap and then being able to uh, have it last for uh, an entire season. So uh, that's my recipe. Awesome. And a great show, Richard. Mm, Thanks. Of course, if you have anything that you want to tell us, something we said wrong, something you don't agree with, some more research that you found to support or refute anything that we've said, send it by email to dudes at 2 or post it on our website. And you can follow us on Twitter at 2KetoDudes, mm-hmm. on Instagram at 2KetoDudes, and make sure to use the hashtag 2KetoDudes. <laughs> and of course, if you want to join the free ketogenic forum, it's forum.2keto.com. And if useless swag is your fancy, t-shirts, coffee mugs, all that junk, head over to gear.2keto.com. And if you want a shot at getting that swag for free, join the 2 Keto Dudes fan club. You'll be eligible to win something in every show. Go to fanclub.2keto.com. And if you feel like supporting our podcasts and our forums, make a pledge on our Patreon page at patreon.2keto.com. Or just hit the donate button on our website at www.2ketodudes.com. Or just go to donate.2keto.com. You can also see our podcast and other videos on YouTube at youtube.2keto.com. And if you haven't already, go leave us a review on iTunes. That's how new people get to know about what we do. Two Keto Dudes is brought to you by Two Keto LLC and produced by Pop Productions, providing audio, video, and podcast production services since 2002. Online at pwop.com. Well, keep calm and keto on, Richard. Yeah, keep calm and keto on, Carl. All right, and we'll see you next time on Two Keto Dudes.